Um, in any event, welcome to the real yesterday, uh, July 11th General Hospital recap. Uh, if you haven't, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos or recaps, and also notification squad. That's a thing now, so you know, hit hit the little bell because you know complications. So let's get right to it. At General Hospital, Elizabeth asked Hayden about Obrecht. Uh, she thinks Franco will be sad to see her go. Um, you know, he's in the middle of settling the civil lawsuits right now and maybe having some money and old artwork back when that's all done. So that's exciting, right? I'm putting my feet on the table because why not? Okay, I should put them down. Okay, or I'll put them up. So many things happening. Uh, Hayden is doing better and Elizabeth offers uh, her to get her some juice or something and they're really bonding and I'm really happy but then I'm also low-key salty because we all know what's gonna happen um, oh at the floating rib there was a big space and I'm like I have the rest of my stuff right at the floating rib and then Andre run into each other they talk about last night he's glad they stopped when they did uh, nothing more happened than what we saw uh, they want to continue being friends Anna gets a call from Dante uh, she's shocked to hear about Valentine too and she's going to go to Dante right now Elizabeth and Hayden uh, come in and they're eating dinner uh, she's really enjoying her ribs Hayden is uh, they have a really good talk about Finn and you know holding off a possible relapse and you know she asked Liz about her like real life experience with it because you can read a bunch of books but I mean obviously living it is the best way to know how to deal with it so Hayden has a pain in her abdomen and Elizabeth keeps her breathing Andre comes over and he wants to get her to General Hospital because she's worried it's the baby at General Hospital everything seems to be fine with Hayden Andre congratulates her he didn't realize she was pregnant uh, turns out that it was probably just like indigestion from eating spicy food uh, so she's like kind of low-key embarrassed um, she knows she's probably going to be a helicopter mom, too, because she's like, if I'm this worried, then what am I going to be like? At Windermere, Nina is sleeping on the couch and wakes up to standing, someone standing over her, and wouldn't you believe, it's Valentine. Uh, he was thrown into a van. He thought he was going to die, but instead he was told that they were dropping the charges. Uh, he didn't ask any questions. You know, I like him. You don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Where did that come from? Uh, so I'm just glad they built this up for months. You know, I'm, I'm really glad that's how this played out. Uh, he thinks the WSB dropping the case is more self-serving for them, so it's easier to bury everything, because if they make a whole trial or conviction, then they're going to have to talk about why they trialed and convicted this person. Uh, he's happy to be home with his wife and daughter, and she's like, yeah, but you don't have a wife anymore. Uh, she says she came to get her stuff, but he sees that she has on his sweater, and uh, she says she was just cold. You know, she was just cold. Uh, she hasn't gotten the divorce papers notarized and like, you know, whatever legal mumbo jumbo you have to do with those. Um, and he wants to convince her that they can be a family again. She tells him to worry about Charlotte. She tells him that she's at the Metro Court right now. There was a wedding and she's glad that he's alive and free. But uh, he should go to his daughter. Uh, they are divorced. At the Metro Court, Dante takes Lulu aside. He has bad news. Valentine is out of prison. Like, actually free. Legit and verified. Lulu is confused how this could happen. And all of us are too. And Dante is going to call Anna. And that's the call she got. Ooh, magic. So, Anna arrives. She's going to call Robert immediately, but it goes to voicemail. But she does wind up getting some information. It was all legit. It was all about sweeping everything under the rug as fast as possible. So Charlotte sees Valentine come out of the elevator and he says he never has to leave her again. He wants to know everything that's gone on with her. So Lulu and Dante come over. She gently takes Charlotte aside so Dante and Anna can talk to him. Anna and Valentine talk about Alex and maybe the WSB let her go too. He wants to collect Charlotte and Dante says that that's not going to happen. Lulu has custody and that's not changing anytime soon. Uh, Charlotte comes back over and he says that you know she should go to Dante and Lulu's tonight because it's late and then you know she'll be back at Windermere before she knows it. And and they're like, yeah, okay. At the PCPD, Nathan comes to see Obrecht. Uh, she wants him to let her go, and uh, not happening, because he doesn't have that kind of authority. Uh, he'll go over the details of the case and see if there's anything she can do, oh, he can do for her. Finn comes to see Obrecht. Nathan wants to discuss the case with him. So Nathan doesn't really want or think that she should go to prison. <laughs> Uh, Finn would be open to an alternative resolution. He wants to hear what Obrecht has to say though. So Nathan comes down with Finn. Uh, she doesn't want to hear what he has to say. One second. Okay. Uh, <laughs> everyone's texting me. It's obviously like one o'clock in the morning. What are they doing? So Nathan tells her to listen to what Finn has to say. Uh, he and Monica have an alternative solution. It starts with her resigning from General Hospital. Yep. 
Uh, so he says she needs to clear his name and write a written apology. She feels this is all about humiliating her. Uh, but if he's reinstated after failing multiple drug tests, it could jeopardize the arrangement with the pharmaceutical company and it would look bad at General Hospital. So it has to be public record that his tests were tampered with and he never actually relapsed. Uh, she won't drag her own name through the mud. So she says no. But it's like, it's not dragging your name through the mud if it's something you actually did. But, you know, that's none of my business. Um, she's done so many horrible things and yet still thinks that she's a self-righteous, amazing person. Hashtag Robin. I want to clarify, I'm referring to what she did to Robin and not that that's what Robin is like. Uh, so she explains why she hates him. You know, she was chief of staff and, you know, got to spend time and bond with her son. And, you know, then her daughter was there too, but... She doesn't really mention Brit. I'm mentioning Brit because Brit will not be forgotten. Uh, Fit and then Finn showed up and it all changed. And he's like, "Yeah, but I only came to treat Tracy, and then I would have left. But you caused so many obstacles, like it kind of caused me staying here." And he thanks her for cornering him into the life he has, and he won't drop the charges unless she resigns. And you know, writes this apology letter, mostly for the sake of the hospital. And she knows she'll never work again. And he says that she was going to do that to him. So, like, and she's like, well, you actually deserved it. Really? Okay. I'm sorry. When was the last time Finn, like, helped keep someone hostage or, uh, well. Uh, so he says she can rebuild her life or be behind a plexiglass talking about to her son. Uh, Obrek will take it all under advisement. Also at the PCPD, Nina comes to see Nathan. He tells her what's happening. Uh, he feels some obligation to help Obrek. I should start calling her Liesl. I know her name is Liesl now. I might make that switch, so just, you know, keep keep on your feet. You never know when it's going to happen. Uh, Nina thinks that he's, like, great at being such a helper to people. Like, he always just wants to help everyone. Uh, she's there for a reality check uh, before she follows her, follows her heart to Valentine. Uh, she tells him about the apparently legitimate release. Uh, she says she just went over there to get her stuff, and she saw Spencer, and he was sad. Uh, she started to get nostalgic, and wound up falling asleep in the sweater and she knows she's backsliding uh, nathan needs to talk to finn uh, he says if she, you know finn says that if she agrees then he'll drop the charges uh, nathan has to follow up with obrecht uh, he wants her to stay uh, nina to stay there and uh, think about all the lies and turmoil and anna incidents that valentine put her through and now end scene elizabeth thanks andre for his help and uh, apparently his words meant a lot to Hayden and he's just looping that they're sisters. He's like, oh yeah, I heard something about that, right? And Elizabeth is really excited about becoming an aunt. Uh, Finn calls Hayden, she spots him in the floating rib. She wants to hear all about his news and he says that Obrecht is considering the deal. Nathan asks Obrecht about the offer. She would have to resign and tell the world what she did. Uh, she would never work again. Uh, he has to go upstairs and he thinks that this deal is better than prison. And Obrecht seems to have another idea. Uh, Finn is taking the most important thing in her life, so she's going to take the most important thing in his life, which looks like Hayden and or the baby. And I absolutely cannot stand this. And I'm gonna finish this out, and then I'm going to scream at you. Not scream at you, scream with you. So Nathan tells Nina to keep Valentine away. Uh, she knows what'll happen if she doesn't. And I'm glad Valentine is home for Charlotte's sake. And Valentine wants to have a drink with Anna real fast. And I'm like, Nina, walking on this. Uh, they drink to his freedom and the bureau. He's had a lot of time to think and reflect uh, the sliding doors of his life, but now he feels gratitude. Uh, being vulnerable to Alex led him to his life-changing surgeries. All the dominoes fell into place. Uh, Anna hopes that he can build a new life and like she did. And, you know, don't blow it because she will be waiting. Okay, so let's talk about this whole Obrecht, Hayden, the baby thing. So... I have thoughts and feelings, and I just want to preface this by saying the actors, actresses, everyone is great and amazing, and um, the actress, I know her name, it just, my brain is fried from a whole day of stuff, and it's hot, I can't remember, but like, she actually replied to me on Twitter, the one who plays Obrecht, so like, and I'm devastated to see Rebecca Buddy go, because I think it's unfair, and I think it's unfair to the viewers as much as it is to the actress, uh, but in any event, so here's my little rant, okay, and tell me what you think. So I absolutely hate this uh, because it was a stretch to keep Obrecht around after what she did to Robin. They found a way to, you know, they incorporated her with Britt. Uh, they even managed to make her chief of staff. 
uh, but I feel like we as the viewers took it in stride and went with it because she's been fairly harmless, mortality wise. You know, she's, you know, rough stuff up around the hospital, but you know, she hasn't, I don't know, killed anyone <laughs> because it just seems so outlandish that the person who helped and was involved in keeping Robin for like, you know, that span of time was like now in this position and then she and Robin had to like work together. It was weird, even for a soap opera, it was weird. But we dealt with it because we did. And to have her, now I'm assuming, I'm jumping to conclusions that they're gonna take Hayden off the canvas using Obrex. So if they don't do that, then that's fine. But if I, if this goes the way I'm starting to see and the way they're foreshadowing, then this all applies. But if it doesn't, then we can throw this out the window. So to have her be instrumental in removing Hayden from the canvas is like almost too much for me, if not actually too much. Like it is actually too much. And I would never stop watching. I know a lot of people I've seen in the comments that they've like tuned off for this. I won't do that because we all know like, you know, it goes like this and there are other characters and I love like the actors are great. Like, but like if they do this, it's just going to make me so angry and like just so, oh, like I can't, like I can't wrap my head around it. And it's just, oh, you know, it's too much. It's just too much. It is. I can't. I just can't. Uh, so thank you for watching. I'm sorry I ended it on this note, but I literally can't. <laughs> um, I will see you tomorrow for more Drama Hospital, and I hope you have a great day. Okay, bye!